Okay, um, let's talk about lead compensator design using root locus. And the idea is, of course, to place the roots of the closed loop system at an appropriate location using a lead compensator. So remember, lead compensator is used for uh, moving the roots of the closed loop system. Can change. the location of closed loop poles. And that's what we want to do. Okay. Okay. My G of S is one over S square and what else? I need the following specifications to be satisfied. Settling time less than four seconds and Percent overshoot less than 35%. Okay. So this particular system has a double pole at the origin. So let's look at the root locus plot for the system. So I have a double pole at the origin. Okay, Murphy's law prevail. I don't have colored chalks. Oh, I do. So cool. Okay, so what's the root locus? It just goes up and goes down from here. So no matter what gain K you pick, you will always be marginally stable and you will never be able to satisfy these two requirements. So how should we go about it? Well, we have to, we cannot use a simple gain controller, so we have to use a lead compensator to change the location of closed loop poles. So let's go through the root locus approach in the handout for lead compensator design. So the first thing is list the system specifications and translate them into desired root location for the dominant roots. Okay. That's step number one. So TS less than or equal to four seconds. four over zeta omega n less than or equal to four. This implies zeta omega n greater than or equal to one. The percent overshoot should be less than or equal to uh, 35%. This implies zeta must be yeah, greater than or equal to 0 0.32. Okay. 
what should we pick as the closed loop pole for the for this system for the closed loop system so zeta omega n greater than or equal to 1 means i need to pick a pole which is on this side of this particular line and zeta greater than or equal to 0.32 means that my pole should lie in this region i can pick any value uh, within this region as my closed loop pole because that would satisfy both these requirements So let me pick a point here. R hat equals to minus one plus two j. I want my closed loop poles to go through that particular location. <coughs> Any questions? <coughs> So remember I could pick anything here okay so I'm just picking one point you can pick any other point it's a completely correct answer So I want my desired closed loop poles to be at minus 1 plus minus so r equals to minus 1 plus minus j2 that's my desired closed loop pole in the case of uh, systems with multiple poles these would be the desired dominant closed loop poles okay now the second step is sketch the uncompensated root locus and determine whether desired root locations can be realized with an uncompensated system so as we've seen if we cannot if we plot the root locus it's just going on the imaginary axis so we cannot really have a pole closed loop pole at this location using just a simple gain controller if a compensator so let's move on to number 3 if a compensator is necessary uh, place the zero of the phase lead network directly below the desired root location so i have to pick my z as real part of r okay that's number 3 so number 1 uh well step 1 is done step 3 i have to pick my zero which is the real part of r so that's this would be my zero remember that zero z is the zero of the lead compensator sorry what step 2 step 2 is plot the root locus uh do you do you have this with you or no please have your uh, lead compensator thing ready um we are just following the steps in the approach yes uh yes it will become very stable uh for sure and you can actually pick any point but typically when you are working on a specific system you would have other constraints too which will say that we cannot have a gain this high we cannot have we cannot place the poles in this location because it will come up with a very costly design or something like that so that's why so we're just dealing with yeah. the rightmost possible value no there is no such rule rightmost leftmost i'm just picking whatever value meets this design specification in real world i'm saying you might have many more design specification that would constrain where you can actually pick right. in this problem if you want to pick somewhere here you are free to pick that but in this scenario that point that we're dealing with is 
is the rightmost. Yes, it's the rightmost, yeah, yeah. But it's not the only rightmost because I could have picked minus one plus j1 or whatever, right, so. Okay. Step four, okay, so step four says, so step four is the most complicated of all these steps. Determine the pole location so that the total angle at the desired root location is 180 degrees. Okay, so this requires a little bit of effort. So let me go through it. So I want to put a pole as well. I want to put a pole uh, for the lag compensator. So of course I'll have a double pole at the origin and I'll have another uh, a zero at Z and a pole at P in the loop transfer function. So I have a zero. I'm looking at the loop transfer function. I'm ignoring the K part right now for the lead compensator. I'm just looking at S plus Z over S plus P multiplied by G of S. So I have a double pole here and I need to figure out this P. Um, I don't quite know where the P is going to be. Uh, okay. I don't know where the P is. This is minus Z and this is of course zero where the poles of the open loop systems, uh, the, yeah, the open loop systems are. Uh, I want the root locus to pass through this point R, which is equal to minus one plus minus, well, this is plus two J, and there is a corresponding point in the negative, with the negative imaginary part. So what is angle GC R G R? Anyone remembers from the root locus? What should this angle be? 180 degrees or minus 180 degrees? Uh, that's right. So we want the root locus to pass through this point. So a point on the root locus will satisfy this particular expression. So angle of GCR, GR has to be equal to minus 180 degrees. So what are known? These pole locations are known because that's for the open loop system. This zero is known because that's, well, it should be negative because real part of R is negative. So I need to add a negative sign here. So this zero is known. It's equal to minus one. Uh, this is the part that is unknown. So I'm going to use this relationship to identify the point P. So I have one equation, one unknown, and that's what I want to solve. So let's do that. Angle of GC is angle of S plus Z minus angle of, well, angle of R plus Z minus angle of R plus P plus angle of G of R equals to minus 180 degrees. So what do I have? Angle of R plus P is minus 180 degrees minus angle of GR minus angle of R plus P, R plus C. Oh, did I, okay, I, I need to make some changes. So 180 degree doesn't have a negative sign. Oh, so it's all plus all the way. Okay, so angle of G of R plus angle of R plus Z plus angle plus 180 degrees. So that's angle of R plus P. Okay, this, this expression implies that. What is angle of R plus Z? So this is my Z. And this is my R. Uh, 
are where I want my closed loop poles to be. So r plus z is the angle of this vector, and that's 90 degrees. Okay, so I have 270 degrees plus angle of g of r. Let me call this theta p. Okay, now I need to take out my calculator to compute the angle of g of r. Now the question is whether my calculator has complex stuff. It doesn't. Anyone has a complex calculator? Like a, can you can you find out what angle of g of r is? So this is ang g of g of r is angle of g of r is angle of 1 over r square where r is minus 1 plus 2j so angle of minus 1 plus 2j square and then i have to add 270 to it Let me also do it simultaneously if I can. How much is that? Uh, is your point two at, at an angle of one twenty seven? One twenty seven? What is theta p? 270 degree plus angle of g. So, so you're, you're giving me this angle? Yeah. OK, what is this? This one is, uh, is your, I'm going to give you the whole thing, the magnitude and the, did you want? I don't need the magnitude. Oh, it's 127. 127. Yeah. OK, so 270 <laughs> plus 127 is 397. That's an absurdly high number. Uh, let's subtract 360 from it. So what do I get? 27 degrees? No, 37 degrees. Right, so 397 is, I've subtracted 360 from here to get 37 degrees. So I'm going to take theta p, 37 degrees. So that's my angle of r plus p. So P is going to be somewhere here, or minus P is going to be somewhere here. I want this angle to be theta P. Which is 37 degrees. Any thoughts on how I can compute the value of P? How did yes. You find, how do you know what this equation is? This equation? Yeah. So G of S is 1 over S square. Oh. So, and we want R to, so this is G of R, right? Angle of G of R. R equals S. Yeah. So S is just a general point in the space. Yeah. R is a specific point in the space. So. Okay. Yes? Right, so that's 2j. So this height is 2j. And the, along the x axis, that length is um, p minus 1. p minus z, okay. Yeah. yeah. And then just uh, tangent? Just do it. Just <laughs> do it. <laughs> okay. All right, just do it. Uh, Okay, so here is, uh, let me 
keep it 127 degrees. So I still need to do some a bit more work in order to find the value of p. So you are right. Uh, what should I delete? I have to delete something. Uh, let me no. I don't want to delete this. Let me delete this side. Okay. So she is saying that well, p minus z absolute value. Okay. No. So she is saying imaginary part of r absolute value over p minus z absolute value is equal to tan theta p. Is that what you were saying? Kind of? Yeah. OK. So that tells me p minus z is imaginary of r over theta p absolute value. No, tan theta p. <coughs> Who wants to take this burden of calculation? So this is 2 over tan of 37. Two over tan thirty seven. Two point six five. So I'm going to place the P at minus three point six five. So Z is equal to one. So P will be equal to minus three point six five. So that's, that's why I said step four is a bit complicated. So P turns out to be so P equals to Z plus absolute value of imaginary R over tan theta P. And this is 3.65. OK, so I now know S plus Z. I now know S plus P. I definitely know G of S. The only thing I need to find out is K. How would I do that? So that's my step five. Number five is evaluate the total system gain at the desired root location and then calculate the, the error constant. The error constant is not required here. We don't have to satisfy the error constant. So all we need to do is find out the system gain at the desired root location. So how would I do that? The question is what should the gain of the system B, what should the value of that K be so that the root location is exactly at this point? Anyone remembers from the root locus discussion what the, how to compute the gain of a specific point on the root locus? So 1 plus K GCG R equals to 0. Right, that was the root locus expression. So my k is minus 1 over gcr gr. So gc here is s plus z over s plus p at this point of time. k is unknown. k is the unknown part. So that's what we want to find out. Well, you can also use root locus to do that, do this calculation, but k turns out to be 
8.1. Well, the book says it's 8.1. I haven't verified it. Someone wants to verify it or? One, minus 1 over GCR, GR. What's this value? Okay, so typically if you are doing a more complicated system, you would, what you would ideally like to do is uh, draw the root locus and hopefully the root locus passes through exactly this point as long as you have not made any significant error in the calculation. And then you can just use the data tip part of the MATLAB to probe the gain value and that would be the gain for the system. So K would be that appropriate number. If you want to compute using an expression, this expression will give you an approximate value of gain K. Now if you have error constant to satisfy, uh, let's say your error constant was not satisfied because of whatever reason, and you need to pick a different value of gain K, then what you have to do is move the roots somewhere else in the plane. There is no, uh, that will require some amount of experience, so there is no prior way of knowing where to pick the root so that the error constants would be satisfied. So you can do trial and error to figure out where to put this R, the closed loop pole. So you will put the desired closed loop poles at maybe some other location, go through step three, four, and five. This is step five. and see whether the error constants are satisfied or not, okay? And go through this whole di trial and error process. Yes? Can you go over real quick on how they got 8.1? Yeah, I'm having trouble. Well, so how much is, how much is, so you have to, uh, so the book has some calculation, but I haven't verified it myself using calculator, so. Yeah, you just have to replace this with R. Okay. So, 8.3? Okay. Yeah, the book might have made some approximations in the process, which I didn't, so we have 8.3. So this is GC of R, GC evaluated at R, so GC is S plus Z S plus over S plus P, and of course G of R is something that you've calculated before. Uh, that's right, because gain K is a real number. Okay, yeah, it is almost zero. Yeah, yeah. It's a real number, so therefore it has to be zero. The angle will be zero. Okay. Is that clear how lead compensator can be designed? So even if I give you a more complicated transfer function here, um, you just have to write down the performance specifications, figure out where the dominant closed loop poles are, which is the most important part. After that, everything is mechanical, okay? You don't have to do too much uh, work to get all these um, parameters. Now, the next in line is lag compensator design. And again, we are going to use root locus to do the same thing. And here is the scenario. So you design the lead compensator, you have put the closed loop poles at some desired location. And now you want to satisfy the error constant using, uh, using another compensator. Now let's try to see what error constants are. I mean, how do you have error, how do you have error constants when you have a lag compensator? Uh, and it will give us, reveal some very important information about the lag compensator. So, yeah, 
Sorry? You just said lag. Yeah, 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 I'm going to do lag compensator now. So now we have moved on from lead compensator, unless anyone has any questions on the lead part. No. Okay. So the goal of lag compensator is to improve the error constant error constant without changing the roots, without changing the closed loop poles. Okay, so first, first thing that I want you to understand, what's the error signal? So now this is, lag has the same, uh, same uh, functional form as the lead compensator. The only difference is uh, now Z, absolute value of Z is much, much larger than absolute value of P, okay? That's lag compensator. So now my question is, what's the error uh, transfer function? Anyone remembers? ES over RS? GCG, that's right. Uh, and this is, yeah, so let's assume that R of S is 1 over S. Then, so if R of S is equal to 1 over S, then what's the steady state error? Limit S goes to 0, S into R S into 1 over 1 plus GCG. G. 1 over 1 plus GC 0, G 0. Okay. This is for a very general transfer function G, so I'm not picking that specific G right now. We'll do that a little bit later. So this is for a specific G. Uh, for any G that you pick, your steady state error with respect to a step input is going to be this value. What is G0? GC0 for a lag compensator. So ignore K for the time being. So ignore K. GC0 is actually Z over P, right? GC0 is Z over P. So if I pick Z much, much larger than P, I can drive down the steady state error as small as I want, okay? As long as G0 is finite number, one, two, five, ten. 10, I can pick the appropriate ratio of Z over P such that the steady state error is less than equal to something that is specified. <coughs> Let's do the same thing, yeah. So you could have done the same thing with just like a simple K, right? But with this compensator, you don't change the position of the poles. So right, the yeah. You don't want to change the closed loop poles. Yeah, that's the constraint given to you. Question? No. no? Okay, let's do the same thing for R of S equals to one over S square, then your steady state error ESS is one over <coughs> limit S goes to zero, S GC S and G S. Now, of course, G C S as S goes to zero is equal to Z over P. 
So once again, what we see is for the ramp input, if I can pick an appropriate value of z over p, I can make it as small as I want. Yes? Yeah, because s multiplied by gs has to be finite, some finite number. So limit of f1, f2 equals to limit of f1 multiplied by limit of f2 as long as these individual limits exist. Do you know this? Uh, I mean, yeah, that So why would you have zero in the denominator? Because the entire thing's multiplied by s. So this one has a limit. GC of s has a limit, yeah. right? Now s multiplied by gs, you need to have a limit for that as well. Now if it is going to zero, if it is going to zero, then it means you cannot control the steady state error. It will go to infinity. Okay. So like with G, so, G of s. Okay. Well, let's consider. Yes. And then the s cancels out one of those s squareds. Isn't there still a 1 over s? So that's why I'm saying I'm not considering this specific g of s. Okay. Yeah. I'm considering a general g of s, both in this case as well as in this case. I'm not considering that specific function. We'll get to it in a bit. Okay. So for any, so let's consider g of s as 1 over s, s plus 1. So now s, g s converges to 1 as s goes to 0, right? So this is the, con this is the situation where, that I'm considering here, OK? Uh, if you, naturally, if you don't have an integrator here in the original transfer function, you cannot have steady state error as small as you want. Your steady state error will always be zero. Now, if you want to drive the steady state error to some finite value, you have to pick a different controller, not a lead, not a lag controller. So you might pick a PI controller in that case. You see why? No? OK. Uh, all right, so let's assume my G of S is 1 over S plus 1. And I want this number to go to some finite value as s goes to 0. GC is still 0 for p, or is that something? Sorry? The GC, are we taking GC into account also? Uh, so, no. So her question is different. Her question is, uh, what happens? So in, this, in the lag compensator design, I'm assuming that limit s goes to 0, GC of s exists. OK? So, I deleted that. Let me write that again. Limit of f1, f2 equals to limit of f1 multiplied by limit of f2. You can do this as long as individual limits are exist, OK? And they are finite. If one of them goes to infinity or something, then you can't take this. You can't multiply the two terms. Now, her question is, if you use a lag compensator, then you want the limit s multiplied by gs to exist. And I was giving an example that if gs is 1 over s, s plus 1, then that limit is going to exist. OK? Now she's saying, what happens if I don't have an integrator here, which means I have my gs as 1 over s plus 1. So I don't have the s term here. So now my limit s goes to 0, s gs will be equal to 0. And that creates a problem in the denominator. Now, what I'm suggesting is if that is the situation, I need to change my GC. And if I pick my GC to be KP S plus Z over S or K S plus Z over S, then I have limit S goes to 0, S multiplied by K s plus z over s multiplied by 1 over s plus 1. 
and now I have this as k z over 1. Is that right? Yeah, k z over 1. So now I can pick my k and z in an appropriate fashion to drive down the steady state error as small as I want. OK. <laughs> Did I lose you? I just, I don't understand where the R of S went, basically. You don't understand where? But, like in the previous one. Yes. Limit is S to 0, S, R of S, and then that. Right. And then the, the two S's canceled out because it's Correct. a step input. Correct. And then that was fine. Yes. Where's, where's the 1 over S squared? Where'd it go? Oh. I see. The question is even more fundamental than what I was trying to answer. So I have limit s goes to 0 s 1 over s square into 1 over 1 plus gcg, right? So 1 s gets cancelled. Then I have limit s goes to 0. one over s plus s gcg. Now limit s goes to zero, s is zero, and the other limit is right here. And this is what I want to drive to as small as I want. Sorry, I skipped some steps, but uh, I thought this would be obvious. Sorry about that. <laughs> so this is, this is precisely the sequence of steps you need to take to arrive at this particular expression. OK. So what I wanted to show was by picking an appropriate value of z over p, you can drive down the steady state error with respect to a step input or with respect to a ramp input or with respect to an acceleration input. You can drive it down to 0, or not 0, but to a small value as long as what you get here is finite. Uh, naturally, the form of controller you pick is important. So if you don't have integrator in the original system, you may want to use a different controller here. But assuming that all the expression works out and there is a need for lag controller, uh, you want to pick your z over p appropriately uh, based on the steady state error specification. OK. So I'm at the lag compensator design. <coughs> And here are the steps. The first one is to obtain the root locus of the uncompensated system. Then locate a suitable dominant root locations, um, which is easy. So let's, do, let's see how to do the lag compensation. OK, uh, there's one more thing I want to mention here. Let's say that let's say I have a root locus that <coughs> trying to think what root locus I should draw. So a pole here, a pole here, a zero here in which case the root locus is going to look like this is what the root locus will look like. Uh, once I have the root locus, um, I design, I looked at the performance specification and I figured out that these are the closed loop poles I want, which meets all the performance specification except the error constant. OK? So these two roots, uh, they satisfy whatever performance specification you have except the error constant. And we want to reduce the error constant. And we want to use the lag compensator for it. Now, one of the things that I told you is by picking an appropriate ratio of z over p, you can drive down the error constant to as small value as you want. But 
what I did not tell you so far is where to pick the value of z and p. Now my question to you is, in this particular uh, plane, where should I place my z and p so that the root locus doesn't change much? Okay. If I put a pole and a zero somewhere here or somewhere here, it's going to alter the root locus significantly. So my question is where can I place it without really altering the root locus at all? The same place where it's at here. Where? Like Close to? Can you overlap like zeros and poles? Um, but that may not satisfy this condition. Right? So remember, we want to make that as large as possible. OK. So the, let's, let's think about it. What happens if I put a pole and a 0 very close to origin? And this is my desired closed loop pole. So this is my R. This is where I want my closed loop poles to be. So I have picked P and Z, which is much, much smaller than absolute value of R. What happens to my 1 plus Let's say this, the gain is k at this, in order to place the pole at that location. So that's my gain k. I have r plus z over r plus p into g of r equal to. What is this going to be equal to? OK, so we know that 1 plus kgr is equal to 0, right? Because it lies on the root locus, and therefore 1 plus kgr has to be equal to 0, because r lies on the root locus. Now, my question is, what is 1 plus k r plus z over r plus p multiplied by gr? It's approximately 0. Because r plus z, so, so p and z are very, very small in comparison to r. So r plus z is almost equal to r plus p. And therefore, this whole thing is almost equal to 1. And therefore, 1 plus k, this multiplied by gr, is almost equal to 0. Which means that you haven't really altered the closed loop <coughs> poles by picking an appropriate value of z and p very, very close to origin. However, you have changed the error constant significantly by a factor of z over p. Okay? So that's the idea of lag compensator. Um, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to use the same example along with the lead compensator and design a lag compensator to meet uh, some error constant criteria in the next class. Well, not in the next class. In the next class, I'm going to do a review lecture so the week after next, um, I'm going to pick up from where we left in this class. Any questions? We still have two minutes. <laughs> Any questions? OK. We can leave now. <laughs>